Hello and welcome to LFC Focus. It's Derby Day tomorrow as Liverpool take on Everton at Goodison Park in the 12.30 kickoff on Saturday. And it's a derby that's come at about the worst possible time it could possibly come at for Liverpool. I mean, slap bang in the middle of a Champions League quarter final against Manchester City, right in the middle of a massive injury pile up for Liverpool as well. If you had to pick one time in the season when you didn't want it to be the derby this weekend, it's this weekend, you know, it's an awful, awful time to be playing Everton. And I mean, the reason I don't want it to be Everton is because any other team, you'd almost just about, you, you might not mind losing. It sounds ridiculous and obviously losing at the end of the day in any game, you don't want it to happen. But if it happened this weekend against uh, Bournemouth or Southampton or anyone like that, you'd say, all right, at the end of the day, you know, we, we had to make concessions. We had to drop a few players because we've got this massive game against City and top four is, you know, relatively secure. You know, it's not to the point where Liverpool can start fielding the kids every single week, but it's at that point where maybe the odd loss or draw here and there wouldn't be too bad. But against Everton, you know, we've got such a brilliant record against them. The last time Everton beat us was eight years ago when Roy Hodgson was our manager. That's normally what it takes for Everton to be able to beat Liverpool is for us to have one of the worst managers in the club's history and to be in one of the worst periods in the club's history in terms of performances. That's what it takes for Everton to get any kind of result against Liverpool these days. And it's just, I really don't, it's almost, it's one of them games where I'd almost genuinely take a draw. You know, in any other derby, I'd, I'd say nothing but a win, you know. And in any other game, really, you know, I expect Liverpool to have a chance to win every game. We're that kind of team where on our day we can beat absolutely Everton. And absolutely any, anyone, not Everton. But in this game, you know, I'd almost just take a draw because I don't, I hate the idea of losing to Everton so much. I almost hate it more than the idea of losing to Man U because at least with Man U, you know, it, the last time we lost them was a couple of weeks ago. It's not the kind of thing that you hate it, but it's not the kind of thing which sickens you to your stomach because it's just the kind of thing you're not used to happening. So I really, really don't want us to lose to Everton. And so that is the reason that I'd absolutely hate the fact that it is this weekend that is Derby Day. And the team news going into this game, like I said, injuries piling up for Liverpool at the moment. I mean, if you want to recap, we've got no Salah, pretty much assumed that he's not going to be available, hobbled off against Man City. Looks like he's actually going to be fine. No long-term issues cropping up there. But I think Jurgen Klopp said if he's not 100%, he doesn't get risked tomorrow. Because, I mean, in a game that, like I said, where we are ringing the changes, we are resting a lot of players... Why risk your star player when he could end up getting injured for the rest of the season? So no Mo Salah for this game. No Joel Matip, he's still out. No Ranyar Klavan, he's still out by the sounds of it. Sounds like Emre Can is losing his battle to be fit for this game. There was someone who reported today that Emre Can was going to be out for the season. It sounds like those reports have been rubbish now. It sounds like actually it's still just being a kind of game-by-game -game thing that Liverpool are trying to get him back to full fitness. Still no real idea whether he's going to be available for Man City. Looks like he's not going to be available for that game either. But yeah, no Emre for this weekend. Still no Joe Gomez and still no Adam Lallana. I think that's all of them covered. Also, there is a lot of talk about Ben Woodburn being injured. So far, I haven't actually seen this from any, you know, necessarily reputable outlets. None of the massive Merseyside journalists or anything like that have said anything about Ben Woodburn being injured, which is bizarre given that you'd certainly expect him to be in with a shout of starting the game tomorrow, you know, with Liverpool making those changes. And one player who is almost definitely going to get his first start under Jurgen Klopp tomorrow is Danny Ings, who has made quite a few substitute appearances here and there, but hasn't really had a proper chance to shine under Jurgen Klopp. It looks like he's finally going to get that opportunity tomorrow. And obviously, his last goal for Liverpool, and I think his last start for Liverpool, was against Everton in the Merseyside derby in Brendan Rodgers' last game just before Jurgen Klopp came in. So it would be a great time for him to get his first goal for Liverpool in a very long time tomorrow. Here is how I think we're going to line up. I reckon it's going to be Karius in goal. There have been calls for Simon Mignolet, which I think is just plain weird because I think while you're resting players for fitness reasons and stuff like that, you don't really need to rest the goalie at the end of the day. You know, just keep him sharp, keep him playing. You know, he's in a very good vein of form at the moment. I don't see a reason to drop him. And Simon Mignolet is, is Simon Mignolet at the end of the day. Why risk him? Why risk him when you can play Loris Karius and he should still be fine for the game against Man City? So I'm going with Karius in goal. I'm then going with Van Dijk and Masterson at centre-back for this game. There have been a few calls for us to rest Virgil van Dijk. I think we need to rest at least one defender. And I think, 
you, you rest Lovren because, first of all, he had a brilliant game against City the other night. And the last thing you want going into another massive game that he could be hugely pivotal in, in the Etihad on Tuesday night, the last thing you want is for him to make another mistake this weekend or, or do something wrong that costs Liverpool points like he did in the last Merseyside derby in the league where he gave away a very questionable penalty. I think it's safe to say... So I th don't think you re there's really any reason to risk Lovren for this game when it could potentially knock his confidence a lot going into what is such a massive game on Tuesday night. And also, with Masterson being our only other fit centre-back at the moment, aside from Lovren and Van Dijk, it is likely that, unfortunately, we are going to have to call on him at some point between now and the end of the season. You know, As inexperienced as he is, without Matip and without Clavin and with, without Gomez for the foreseeable future, there are many situations where we may have to call on Conor Masterson to step up and play in the first team. And I think if you're going to bring him in, you want him next to Virgil van Dijk because Virgil van Dijk so far at Liverpool has proved that he's kind of the kind of player that with his organisational abilities and his ability to rally the players around him, he gets the best out of those around him and I think if you're bringing in a kid from the academy you want Virgil van Dijk alongside him to you know to put an arm around him and say don't worry lad we're going to get through this together so I think bringing in Conor Masterson alongside van Dijk in a derby as well the kind of game that he'll be massively fired up for could do a world of good for his confidence and hopefully help him if we ever need to call on him again between now and the end of the season so I'm going with van Dijk and Masterson as the centre back pairing and then Klein on one side finally making his comeback from injury I think you know Trent I Alexander Arnold, kid needs a rest. The kid needs a rest. And if we have any more problems with midfield, there's been a little bit of talk about potentially playing Alexander Arnold as a sort of defensive midfielder. You know, he played there earlier on in his career at Liverpool and he's got the discipline, I think, for it. Maybe lacks a little bit of the strength, but hopefully there will be players around him that can help him out there. And I think if you are considering Trent in midfield for the game against City at the Etihad, you've got to have Nathaniel Klein fit and ready. And I also think, you know, while I've said in the past that we don't want to be throwing him in in the starting eleven. By now, he's had enough time training with the first team that hopefully he should be fit enough to start this game. And in a game where Liverpool are rotating, it's not the biggest trade-off, I think, to take Trent Alexander-Arnold out. Give him a bit of a rest. You know, he's only a kid. Had a great game the other night as well. He needs a little bit of a break and put Nathaniel Klein in. And then on the other side, similar thinking, really. You know, Andy Robertson, great game against City the other night. Desperately needs a rest so he's fit and ready for the uh, second leg of that tie. So you bring in Alberto Moreno, you know, a player that has not really let Liverpool down this season you know it sounds weird to say it about Moreno but he's actually been pretty reliable so I think it makes sense to bring him in for this game at left back and then the midfield this is where I think Liverpool need to stay strong you know there have been shouts for I think Herbie Kane who's actually playing with the under 23s tonight uh, Camacho as well can't remember his first name he's been a, a shout to put into the midfield as well I think if you're going to rotate elsewhere on the pitch you need to make sure that you go with a strong midfield because they're the ones who'll be able to take a grip on the game control things and just take a little bit of pressure off the players around them so I think you go with Henderson he's basically an undoubted starter because obviously he is suspended for the game against City on Tuesday night and then I think you go with Vinaldum and Oxlade Chamberlain either side of him I think you give Milner a rest because he played the full 90 minutes against City also put a lot of energy into that game we're going to need him again with our midfield options depleted against Man City on Tuesday night and I think with this many games he is you know he's in he's a great athlete and a great player and a great worker but he is getting to those later stage in his, stages in his career where he may not be able to produce that top level you know midweek weekend midweek with that kind of intense schedule and the kind of intense games we're playing so I think Milner is the one who misses out so you have Henderson and then Vinaldum and Ox either side because that that's actually a pretty good midfield when you think about the changes that Liverpool are going to have to make and a midfield that I trust to still dominate this game to take it by the scruff of the neck and carry those youngsters and changes through this game and then the front three this is where you're getting a few more changes I think you go with Solanke down the middle and then Ings and Mane either side maybe if you put I think if you put Ings on the right hand side and then what you do is you have Mane on the left drifting inside a little bit occasionally that formation can change to a diamond where you have Mane operate, operating in a sort of a free roam number 10 role and then Solanke and Ings up front as a pairing I think that's the kind of formation that Liverpool will go with that is how I think we're going to go with the starting 11. So Everton then unlike Liverpool Everton are actually in a pretty good situation going into this game you know they've had a lovely week off after getting ripped apart by Man City last weekend they've got no real massive injuries to talk of at the moment only the odd player out on a long layoff but no crises to talk of but at the end of the day 
Everton are Everton and Sam Allardyce is Sam Allardyce. And while, you know, I am worried about this tie because of the weaknesses in this Liverpool side and obviously Everton will be bang up for this game because like I said it's one of their best opportunities to win a Merseyside derby potentially in the eight years since Roy Hodgson was our manager but they're still Everton and they're still a terrible terrible side you know they're it's not a great squad it's not a great manager they're still not in great form at the moment they are entirely beatable and I think Liverpool should still going in go into this game seeing themselves as the favorites they should still going in, go into this game thinking you know what we can dominate here we can dominate the ball we can get all the chances we're the ones who should be coming away with three points so here are my three reasons why I think Liverpool will beat Everton first of all Liverpool are Liverpool and Everton are Everton and at the end of the day there's just some Something about this game that seems to get the absolute worst out of Everton. I think it's almost like World Cup finals or European Championship finals. You know, those massive games on the international stage where teams are so afraid of the prospect of losing that they, they play within themselves. They don't express themselves properly and they end up not playing to the best of their ability. And that seems to happen to Everton an awful lot in these games, you know. And yeah, they've they've got a few draws down the years, but the fact that they haven't won a game in the Merseyside derby for eight years tells you all you need to know about the kind of mentality that they bring into these games. And I think this game could almost end up being an awful lot like the Merseyside derby in the Cup earlier on this season, where Liverpool, again, didn't actually field a great team in that game. We also had a few injury problems. There was no Mo Salah. We just lost Phil Coutinho as well to Barcelona. And Liverpool didn't play well in that game. You know, we were really bad, but we managed to jam a win because there just seemed to be something going on in the back of Everton's heads that meant that they couldn't quite get their heads around the idea of beating us. You know, at the end of the day, Liverpool won through a dodgy penalty and kind of got lucky in that Jordan Pickford made a mistake from a corner. But we still come away with the win and that's the kind of thing that I'm hoping we do in this game where Liverpool you know we won't play to the best of our ability this weekend because we can't because we haven't got the personnel to do so but I'm still expecting a Liverpool win because it's the Merseyside derby and that is what Liverpool do and second of all like I said having a strong midfield is really key to winning this game because if Liverpool are ringing around the changes if they haven't got their first choice attack if they haven't got their first choice defence then as long as we have experienced professional professional top quality players in the middle of the park we can still seize control of this game and keep it ticking over you know and I think the key to the, winning this game is even though we have those changes we have key players in key areas of the park that help us get over the line you know Virgil van Dijk is another one that's why I want him starting this game because if you have Lovren instead of van Dijk suddenly that defense looks incredibly shaky but if you have someone in there who's capable of taking everything by the scruff of the neck and saying all right lads I'm going to carry us through this I'm going to marshal us through this just do as I say and you'll be fine then I think Liverpool will be absolutely fine and another one of those players that I think will help carry us through this game and my third reason why I think we will beat Everton is Sadio Mane he is the forward player that I'm hoping will help get the best out of Ings and Solanke and I think Liverpool need to start him in this game because he's a little bit of a demon when he comes up against Everton they don't seem to know much about how to deal with him he scored in both games against them last season which obviously gets in their heads a little bit as well they're thinking oh god not this guy again not Sadio Mane again we don't like playing against him obviously Liverpool have got the potential to bring on Roberto Firmino from the bench late on in the game as well but I think you absolutely start Sadio Mane because he's been in good form as well at the moment and I think you want to keep that going and he's just becoming a little bit of a demon in dropping in and kind of performing that wing 10 role his movement is becoming more unpredictable his positioning is more unpredictable the kind of passes that he's playing are unpredictable as well and I think he will just be too much for Everton to deal with should he start tomorrow afternoon so that is all for today's video thank you guys very very much for watching I'm afraid again the post-match video is going to have to come out on Sunday rather than Saturday afternoon 12.30 kickoffs don't suit me I'm at work when they happen which is a shame but never mind the post-match video will be out in the end until then don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it hit that subscribe button there if you're new around here check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days as well and I'll see you in a couple of days time for the post-match video after hopefully Liverpool's second string have still battered Everton. Bye for now.